the magic of show business and being a cheap SOB too. Like I can, I, that's my favorite thing to do, is do the announcements. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could just do that, like that Michael Buffer guy, he's a millionaire, I'll go, let's get ready to run. Isn't that, it's wrong. Anyway, thank you ma'am for laughing at my pain. Thank you. We have a wonderful show for you ladies and gentlemen. We're so pleased that you uh, chose us as your entertainment for a Friday evening. Uh, you have a lot of choices, but this is the only one where uh, the comics are not on drugs. So, um, <laughs> uh, we, we're calling this Black Friday Comedy because, um, um, uh, never mind that joke. Uh, we're calling it, <laughs> only the staff left at that. Um, we're calling it Black because it's uh, usually people go shopping. Anybody go shopping today? Yes. Did you? Did you get a great deal on something? No. No? Did you stay in a long line? Yes. And you got no deal? I can stand here all night. I don't care. I don't really have a life. Or, what were you trying to buy? Some pants? I'll sell you these pants. Right now, these are nice. I never, I just figured that maybe I would just work a little harder and just be able to pay whatever the thing costs. I don't understand. You know what I say, you get 50% off. Or, if I make enough money, I can just drive down there when no one's there and just drive right out. Instead of standing in line with the animals. I went to one Black Friday sale uh, at a Walmart one time because I figured if I'm going to do it, let's do it right. You know, like, if you, you know, if you, if you can get a fist fight and fight out what it feels like, pick the biggest guy. So if you're going to go to the most horrible Black Friday, go to a Walmart in Pinal County. You know? And there were people standing there before they started the sale where there would be pallets of stuff with their hands on it like this. It's standing there, touching it like it was like like a, a religious shrine. And I asked one guy, I go, what are those? He goes, I don't know. But I'm getting one. I stood in line to get a TV, and then I went home and watched about how stupid it was to do Black Friday sales. I like the way that you're laughing one at a time. Instead of laughing as a, like a whole cohesive group of people, you're just kind of going, one guy goes, ha! Ah! Then the guy goes, I'll, I'll be next right now. <laughs> Will you laugh for me? I'm on the phone. <laughs> We're going to be here for six hours. You might as well start enjoying yourself. <laughs> you got your car. You drove down here. Have a good time. Um, I'm having fun. This is, uh, this is the only uh, time I ever go out is when I'm doing shows. I don't, uh, I don't go out anymore because um, uh, no one likes me. I don't go out because uh, like I'm 60 and I, there's less and less reasons to go, you're gonna go see, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the new James Bond film? I go, is it one where like he shoots a lot of people and he almost dies, and, but then he doesn't die, and then he sleeps with like three sexy girls and one of them gets killed? They go, yeah, I go, no, I'm not gonna see that. I saw that in 1964, 1971, 1985. I'm gonna watch that, I gotta go watch James Bond. That's not how shit works. You know, so uh, I, yeah, I don't, uh, people go, well, you want to you go out to eat? And I go, yeah, no, I don't want to, you know, first off, I, I don't want to go out to eat because I'm embarrassed now because I get like food in my teeth. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You do, don't you? Yeah, yeah I, mean, I still have lunch in a molar here. <laughs> it is, I don't, I don't have a refrigerator anymore. I just have spaces <laughs> in my teeth. And I keep food. You can tell the people with dental problems enjoyed that. <laughs> Are there 12 of you out there, or just some of you, only a few of you getting this? I'm not sure what's going on right now. I don't know if I'm doing well or if this is sucking. I can't tell. <laughs> and for someone over here, it's TV. That's good. People aren't even laughing at it. <laughs> I don't want to say the country's getting old, but people don't laugh anymore. They're just going, <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm uh, 60. 60 years old. And you don't really, I, you never think of yourself old till you like meet the people that you knew when you were young. Now you, Jesus, what happened to you, Ray? I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> Go, you're standing there, fool. <laughs> yeah, 60. By applause, how many people in the room are, uh, let's say, 50 or over? 50 or over? <laughs> how many people say under 50? <laughs> you hear that? There was a little more energy with the under 50? <laughs> That's the sound of false hope. <laughs> You're still thinking that there's a sh shot at something. There's not. There's not. There's no. There's really no hope. So um, start saving now. So 
Uh, yeah, I'm 60, and uh, uh, this is kind of an odd statistic for me. I am uh, 30 years sober. I've been sober for 30 years. Thank you. For 30 years, I was drunk, and for 30 years, I've been sober, which means for 30 years, I had a good time, and for 30 years, I was drunk. So, <laughs> that joke would go over great in like a 12-step show. <laughs> Hey, 30 years ago, I gave up drinking, I gave up drugs, I gave up gambling, I gave up smoking. I'm actually addicted to quitting shit. <laughs> I knew I quit everything. I didn't just quit that. I just quit all kinds of stuff. I quit school, I quit work, I quit my marriages. I'm going to quit telling this joke. So, uh... <laughs> It was a laugh from the rafters. Did you hear that? This place is like Phantom of the Opera. There's like a guy up there. Na, 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 na. Everyone's all laughing at stuff. Yeah, but you know what? We stay younger longer, or at least we convince ourselves of it, because uh, we have pills and drugs. I watch uh, cable news all day, because I work at night, so I'm, I'm home all day. Watch, here's the most, uh, if you watch cable news, whether it's Fox, MSNBC, NBC, whatever you watch, here is the, what do you think is the most common used phrase if you watch cable news all day? Ask your doctor if this drug is right for you. <laughs> You realize, no, young people don't watch the news. They don't watch the news. No one under like 50 watches the news. Because every commercial is for some pill to fucking cure some shit you didn't know you could get. <laughs> Zimbator cures Mooncompa. Oh, do I have that? And I don't, you know, they don't even, you know, I don't know, I'm very careful about the drugs I use. When I was a kid, I didn't care. You know, Here, take this, what's it do? I don't know, take it, find out. <laughs> There's a pill out for depression, for depression. And at the end, you ever notice sometimes that the, uh, the things that they say about the pill are longer than what the, the bad parts are longer than the good parts? Yeah. It'd be like five seconds of, this may make dry eyes normal again, may cause exploding head, feet falling off, people to kill you randomly, hallucinations, teeth flying out, anal leakage, they all cause anal leakage. There has not been one pill made in the last 20 years that doesn't have anal leakages. There's some freak at the pharmaceutical company going, yes. <laughs> this guy owns, you know, he owns a big stock in the adult diaper industry or something. Because every damn pill causes anal leakage. We'll clear up ulcers and give you brighter teeth. May cause anal leakage. Cures cancer. May call anal leakage. Turn your hair from gray to brown. May cause anal leakage. <laughs> This is not a good trade-off. <laughs> you know, and it, it was one for depression, and it was for depression, and the side, the side effects were suicidal thoughts and anal leakage. <laughs> and I go, we already have a drug for that. It's called whiskey. <laughs> Are you guys ready to start this show? Yeah! I got a lot of show for it. I really believe it. I mean, you know, we, we like to, uh, you know, the lowest, we, if you use promo code Tony, you get tickets as low as eight bucks. Somebody doesn't know that. Beautiful building. And uh, I put together a lot of show for you because I think you deserve it. Because uh, I, I do. I just love doing shows in this state, in this city, and for you guys. So we got a lot of show for you tonight. Going to close it with one of the funniest comics in America, John Gregory. Uh, before we start, we're going to have a guy, a brand new guy, who is highly recommended to us. Our very first time at a Tempe Comedy Concert Series show. And uh, let's give him a lot of love and support. A warm welcome, please, James Kamari. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is actually Jamie Kamire, but we're close enough, as long as the check clears, that's fine. I moved here from Boston not too long ago, and when I got here I wanted to make a change for myself, so I signed up for Weight Watchers. Happy to report I have already lost 20 pounds. Thank you. Did you know that crystal meth has no points? I have no idea. Smoke as much as you want, the weight just falls right off. I appreciate you too, sir. <laughs> now I'm married and uh, my wife is great. She's always trying to come up with ways to spice things up. She said, hey honey, I think we should take a bath together because that would be romantic. Want to know how that went? Awful. Let's face it, sitting up naked in a tub, this is not my sexy pose. Not feeling confident unless you're into a big bowl of vanilla ice cream. I think it's been about 27 years since the last time I took a bath. I remember it being a little bit easy to get out of the tub back then. Honest to God, I almost died. I felt like a castaway trying to hoist myself into a life raft and trying to hook the leg. Save your life, hook the leg. 
safe to say that didn't work, but I'm not one to give up, so I started reading up on this book. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's called the Kami Sutra. <laughs> and the Kami says, to increase sensuality, keep your eyes open right through the climax. And I'm thinking, keep your eyes open during the climax. I thought that was like sneezing. Nobody keeps their eyes open during the climax. I figured I'd give it a shot anyways. I think I was anything but sensual. Probably more along the lines of really surprised over and over again. <sighs> Strike two. So I come up with a sex move. Oh yeah, it's a sex move. Fellas, write this down. See, what I like to do is keep my boxer shorts hooked around one ankle so I don't have to search them in the dock afterwards. <laughs> Works well, when you can't see those things, might as well be made of bed sheets. You can't locate those things. We have a kid, you know, we have a kid, and uh, you know, we had him before we were married, you know, on purpose. And, and he's great. When you're a parent, you learn to make sacrifices for your kid, because you want to have everything, you really do. Those sacrifices have taught Dad to be a little bit more resourceful. Just the other night I ran out of cranberry juice, so I made a vodka and Pedialyte. <laughs> it was really good. I call it a terrible father. I ate so much food yesterday. Oh my god, you know what that means today? It's not a Black Friday, it's a Brown Friday. Oh, boy. oh it was coming. You know it was coming. You know it was coming. Well, I had a job that used to require me to fly a lot. And uh, I was always there in coach, and I hated it, but whatever, I, I did it. And I flew so much that eventually I got a complimentary upgrade. I got an upgrade into first class. And it was really nice, but what they don't tell you about first class is how that it really changes you. And it's not the same anymore, because now I'm at the airport, I've got my boarding pass, and they say we are now boarding first class, so I go to board, and there's a gentleman standing in my way. I said, excuse me, sir, are you in first class? He said, no. I said, oh, could you get the fuck out of my way? <laughs> heard the announcement, they said first class, not second class, step aside now. Oh, so good. So finally, I make it way through the filthy peasant gauntlet. <laughs> I get to my seat, and this is great. They're coming through, and they're like, oh, can we get you a drink? And I said, yeah, how about a cranberry and vodka? And they said, well, we don't have a cranberry, but we have cran apple. That's really close. I said, oh, if I go shit on the toilet, but not actually in the hole, that's pretty close. <laughs> It's going well, and I'm thinking, this is great, that's fine, you know, and everything's fine, and then it has to happen. They have to parade the second class right by you. There they go, there's not a back door to herd the cattle through. They're walking through, and one of them brushes my shirt, it's like, oh, oh my God, look at this. Can I get that hot towel, please? I, I got commoner all over me. Oh, you know what, forget it, the shirt's ruined. Oh my God. It, and the stench. Can, can these people get some new wood chips and newspaper? What's going on back there? <laughs> hey, my name is Jamie Kamai, guys. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're supposed to bring up the next guy. I was not informed of that. <laughs> Jamie Kamai, ladies and gentlemen. I guess we didn't tell him. Ernie, we didn't tell him. Ernie? No. We didn't tell him. No, we didn't tell him. No. Should I bring you up now? At this point, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Coming to stage right now is a very funny man. Uh, he's a regular on our shows and uh, one of our favorite people. How about a warm welcome, please, Ernie Green? <laughs> one more time for Tony. I had a rough day today. I was traveling back from the East Coast. Some asshole was giving me shit because I wasn't in first class. <laughs> <laughs> I 
like a Boston accent. What the fuck is problem? <laughs> My name is Ernie Green, and I was actually on the East Coast for work. I actually had to take a uh, sexual harassment class. Yeah, I know, funny, huh? How you told the punch on you? Calm down. So, I had to take a sexual harassment class, which is really you know, bullshit, because I already know how to do it. <laughs> I had references to my past 17 jobs and everything. <laughs> I can't see any of you guys, but I like the ones who are laughing. <laughs> I got a text backstage from this girl that said, I want to see your junk. So I sent her a picture of my Seattle Seahawks season tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and my penis. <laughs> the Seattle Seahawks are the only 53 people that score, only 53 people that score less than I do. <laughs> yeah, it's a true story. I've been shot down so many times on social media, my profiles are now sponsored by Malaysian Airlines. <laughs> That's like, the, that's like the tenth offensive, most offensive thing I say. <laughs> so, my goodness, uh, I was actually, the other day I was hitting on this girl on Facebook and it turns out that number one, she's married, and number two, I come to find out that she's like a long, long distance cousin of mine, yeah. <laughs> and that really grossed me out, you know? I mean, I had no idea she was married. <laughs> I told you it wasn't getting better. The last girl I dated, she, um, a couple, about a year ago, she was a, a special ed teacher, and she, and she dealt with kids with like really, really bad behavioral issues. Like those kids, they spit on her, they pulled her hair, and they degraded her. Once in a while, they did, they did things to her that didn't turn around. <laughs> Some comics go for rat laughs, I go for groans. <laughs> My only hidden talent is I can name all 44 presidents in sequential order. Which explains why I haven't gotten laid in four score in seven years. <laughs> it's amazing that Gettysburg burger dress humor always works so well. Especially with that lady. She sold, I think she had sex with uh, Robert E. Lee. I like when they go over too well. <laughs> I asked a girl out this weekend, she said, Ernie, I just don't respect what you do for a living. It was my coworker. <laughs> I asked another girl out, she said, Ernie, I, uh, I like a funny guy who's athletic. Yet when I climbed through her second story bedroom window wearing a clown suit, she called the cops. <laughs> <laughs> I've been single for a while, and I'm the oldest in my family, I'm 36, and my mom, she wants grandkids and shit, so she bothers me all the time about having, I want grandkids, I want grandkids, and she actually tried to sign me up for a, uh, a website, christianmingle.com, and so she found out you had to pay to be at christianmingle.com, she could not believe that somebody would take the name of Jesus Christ and exploit it for profit. <laughs> I was like, really, Mom? Holy shit, next thing you know, they're going to start passing around collection plates at church. <laughs> My mom's a, she's, she's a great lady, but she's one of those overprayers. Like, I talked to her on the phone the other day, and she goes, okay, I'm walking into the store. I'm looking for some great deals, so pray for me. I'm like, so to recap... You want me to stop what I'm doing, get on my knees, and pray that you save 25 cents on Lucky Charms. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I like Lucky Charms, so I did it. <laughs> I recently bought a new car, and when I bought the new car, I picked it out, and the, uh, the dealer says to me, he goes, well, Ernie, this car is your Huckleberry. I had no idea what a Huckleberry meant, so I looked it up. A Huckleberry means Paul Bear. I apparently bought the car I'm going to die in. <laughs> Which I don't think is true because I did not buy a Chevy. Oh, no. And we have Chevy drivers in the house. Let me try that again. I don't think it's true because I did not buy a Ford. <laughs> hey, there we go. Next time I'll go to the parking lot and see where the most cars are. So, I'm a, uh, a big, big fan of uh, wrestling. And I'm a big fan of what's called the WWE Network. Or what I like to call it, Netflix for Virgins. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm a big fan of WrestleMania. I try to go every single year. This year, WrestleMania is in Dallas. And that's a really, really cool place to be. Unless you're a president riding in a convertible. <laughs> yeah, that joke always hits back and to the left. <laughs> but back and to the left. Yes, it does. All right. On that note, my name is Ernie Green. Thank you very much. I guess I'm telling more jokes. <laughs> so, they're really, they're really, there's nobody else come on stage.
all right, fuck it, I'm telling some more jokes. <laughs> so, I'm in Buffalo, New York, and um, I'm a big hockey fan. When I came down to Phoenix, everyone was like, you know what, you know, you're officially a Phoenician. You should really try enjoying things that us Phoenicians like. Not hockey, I go like, what, racism? <laughs> <laughs> My friends in Buffalo, they're not too smart. I once had a uh, friend get a DUI, picking up his girlfriend from the police station who had gotten a DUI. <laughs> <laughs> My only hope is that they have a kid so they can have a per uh, designated driver. <laughs> yeah. So, <I'll... laughs> come on, bro. That wasn't that difficult of a joke. Keep on. <laughs> so, I am. Um... From Buffalo, last year they had this huge storm around Thanksgiving, and I was watching the news there, and they, on, the, on, the, on the TV station, the lady said, I swear to God, she goes, if you're homeless, go to our website, and we'll give you a place, place you can see seltzer. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know a lot about the homeless, but I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of three-wheel shopping carts equipped with Wi-Fi. <laughs> Only three minutes late. All right, my name is Ernie Green. Thank you very much. Coming up on stage, he's already on stage. Come on, you come up. Coming up on stage, a very close personal friend of mine, very, very funny man, just came from Los Angeles. Give it up for Buddha! Give it up for them. Give it up. Man, pulling extra duty when people don't come up when they're supposed to. Oh, yeah, my name is John Buddha. I'm going to tell you a few things about myself, just to give you an idea who John Buddha is. All right, let's begin. I'm a real good listener. Let me tell you all about it. <laughs> I'm an honest liar, but you probably shouldn't believe that. Oh. How you doing? I'm what you call a medium achiever. It's like being an overachiever, except this ain't no big deal for me. <laughs> yeah, and what else can I tell you about myself? Uh, I was molested. Yeah, at the tender age of 27. <laughs> by the guy at the breaking muffler shop. And ever since then, I haven't been able to trust the Midas touch. <laughs> Here's a few more fun-filled facts about John Buddha. I had an episode in an amusement park, which they didn't find very amusing. So later on, I'm talking to the doctor, and he's telling me I'm having a midlife crisis. I want to know what gives a pediatrician the right to determine that He's offering me a death sentence. I was just trying to tell my mom that I really, really wanted a pirate hat because I need to. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of something really cute, guys. I thought I saw the cutest thing the other day. I saw a little kid trying to put on his daddy's pants. Oh, he's too small for him, but he's still trying to walk around him so his pant legs are trailing behind him like Linus' blanket. The only reason I'm bringing that up is because just for fun, I tried on a Magnum condom. <laughs> and that was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> oh yeah, so watch out ladies. That's right. <laughs> oh man, when I get married, my old lady's gonna have so many orgasms. And then she's gonna come home and I'm gonna get some too. <laughs> so it's kinda nice. <laughs> oh man, I'm looking for a girl. That's because I'm looking for a certain type of girl. Really. I'm looking for a girl that's hungry for 12 inches. Oh, she has got to have it. But is used to only meeting half her expectations. <laughs> I have standards, I guess. <laughs> Oh, I guess you guys should know this. Makeup sex is never what you expect it to be. Especially after a bar brawl. <laughs> hey, what's going on? What are you doing, guys? Are we still fighting? This is 
really nice. And you know I like nice stuff. Like for their one year anniversary, I gave the producers of that show Hoarders a great big box of knickknacks. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. How does that feel, huh? How does it feel to get nice things? You could hide under a pile of trash next to a moldy loaf of bread and a dead bird. Stop exploiting people! It's not very nice. Some people don't think I'm very nice. But here's what they didn't bother to find out. I once gave a tsunami survivor a relaxation mixtape with half the sounds of the ocean. <laughs> and half the sounds of Niagara Falls, followed by the sounds of an aquarium, just in case they got homesick. <laughs> hey, at least I'm not violating anybody's civil rights. Like that cop that pulled over that woman for having a busted headlight. Then he makes her get out of the car, unclasp her bra, and start jumping up and down. Were you laughing about that? I don't think that's very nice. Because I watch a lot of the new detectives, and I want to know, how did that officer know she had a busted headlight if she was wearing a bra? <laughs> that is a clear-cut violation of a civil, of women's civil rights, and the left ones too. <sighs> we don't need to get internal affairs in on this even. We just need to get that FBI t-shirt wearing guy to handle this. You gotta watch out while you're driving, is my point because I was driving at leisurely 88 miles per hour, <laughs> testing out the theories of time travel. And my passenger tells me, hey man, we're in the school zone, watch out. And I was like, great Scott Marty, you're right. <laughs> I forgot my bulletproof vest. <laughs> you need to get out of here, it's dangerous. <laughs> because education's not just inside the schools, it's outside of the schools too. Seriously, I was watching this show on the Discovery Science Channel called Cheat Sheet, teaching me stuff about myself that I didn't even know. Like when I shoot my goo, it comes out about 24 miles per hour. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. I know, it sounds like a public service announcement. But that's just because that's the way I say stuff comes out sounding. Because any day of the week you can hear me saying something like, I don't know, underage drinking. Now kids, don't do it. But since you're going to do it anyways, here's what you want to do. Brush up on your math. Because you're going to need to tally up the retail costs of all the things that you're going to want to drink. Then you're going to figure 18% and add that to that total there. And then you're going to figure out 50% of that whole total. And that's the whole amount of cash you're going to need to get ahead of time. Trust me, it's a lot easier than trying to talk a homeless drifter or getting me to buy it for you. <laughs> but the math's not over yet. You're going to have to get twice the amount of things that you have on your list, put half of them on the counter along with all the cash, then be out of there like it's a beer run. You won't have to be making any fake IDs because nobody's going to be carding you. And what's the clerk going to do? Report a purchase? You left the cash right there on the counter? <laughs> Along with all the stuff that he has to scan into the register, yeah, he's got to put it away, but you left him a 15% tip. Most beer runs don't leave nothing. And while you're at it, don't forget the porno magazines. All right? Because that's where the money is. Just ask Hugh Hefner. But what can I do to compete with that ocean of filth that's already out there? Hugh is, is putting clothes back on women. That's how drastic the measures he's got to come up with just to compete in the industry he helped create. <laughs> but I'm going to publish a magazine where every other page it's made out of a Kleenex. <laughs> Plus a bounty paper towel for the centerfold. That's right, I'm calling it Neato Magazine, because let's face it, with a rag like that, you're going to need a really catchy name. 
I can see the letters already, you guys. Oh, I can see the letters already. John, you don't respect women objectifying them like that. And I'll have you know that I treat women like doctors. Because every time I talk to them, they insist on telling me what's wrong with me. <laughs> That's why I had to fire my shrink. Yeah. She tried to tell me I had to face my fears head on. Now, maybe I should have told her I was a little bit homophobic, but I didn't like where she was going with the cure. Turns out this quack wasn't even a doctor. I had been talking to the top customer service representative at Grinder for the last 29 minutes. <laughs> at least I did achieve a breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. I finally found the inner strength to kick Pam Anderson and Winona Judd out of my spank bank <laughs> for contracting hepatitis. I can't be having that. I got underage girls and pregnant women running around in there. And that just wouldn't be nice. <laughs> Guys, that's my time. I want to bring out our next comic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Applause break. Hell. Let's turn this to a standing ovation. Guys, I'm going to bring up the next guy. His name is Paul Whitney. Paul Whitney watches a lot of TV. Let's review. Paul Whitney, everybody. You know, it always makes me sad when people like Yogi Berra pass away. People who I could have sworn had died a decade ago. <laughs> At least I'm reassured in knowing that he is up there with Larry King. <laughs> yes, my name is Paul Whitney and I am a stay-at-home dad, which means my primary job is reaffirming to my son every day how awesome it is for a woman to earn a heck of a lot more money than a man. <laughs> yes. But my job is even better than that. I'm a stable dad of a third grader. Which means from nine to three, every day, house to myself. Yes. Doing laundry in my boxers, watching the WWE network while eating a hunk of cheese. <laughs> what could be more manly than that? And then my son comes home, and I have plenty of time to teach him what I know. Like, there's more things to life than just money. There's Super Mario High Score. <laughs> if life is throwing you curveballs, keep taking them. Because in time, life will need Tommy John surgery. And then you get your home run. <laughs> or my most important lesson... Every Kelly Clarkson song that doesn't kill you does make you stronger. <laughs> yes. And like I said, he's addicted to this game called Minecraft now. You know, it's a game where you, they like dig virtual tunnels on their computer. And I'm like, I'm beginning to think we should just move to Mexico. Because <laughs> there you can at least dig real tunnels, <laughs> interact with other kids. And maybe actually earn some dinero if he gets a dreadlord out. I mean, doesn't seem like that crazy a thought. So, and he'd know what to do if daddy ever got in prison too. You know, cover all bases. Yeah, and this year is very big for me because I finally did that 42-year-old thing of getting a vasectomy. Woohoo! Yes. I came to the conclusion I've adopted one boy They've done enough. So, yes. But thank goodness for my dog during the entire process. My dog was such a wonderful resource. Having gone through it himself 14 years ago. <laughs> yeah, he told me the cone of shame was going to be the worst part for the week. And darn it, it wasn't. <laughs> yes. And then a couple weeks ago, we had a busy weekend. My son had a baseball game. And then we had to go to a family reunion. Yes, or as I like to think of it, we went from 
who's on first talk to who died first talk. <laughs> yeah, and I watched, she had this cousin who, Betty, who had a 21-year-old son, and they had to leave because a 21-year-old son was acting up for some reason. And everyone was like, oh, poor Betty. Oh, she has so much on her plate. Well, I'm looking at my nine-year-old son. Come on, boy, we should be the ones getting out of this reunion, not that 21-year-old. Where on earth did I go wrong? I just don't know. And also, how dare he choose baseball as his sport? That sport drives me crazy. But that's another topic. But on to a happy topic, though. You know, the Republican National Committee has decided that they're not going to have any more debates on NBC. And so I got to thinking, I know exactly where they should have one of their debates. The World Wrestling Entertainment Network. <laughs> yes, a match made in hell. But just imagine, you could have a tag team debate where none of them make full thoughts themselves, but maybe if they had a tag team partner, one of them could start with a thought and tag out and we could actually have cohesive statements. We could learn something. Yeah. We could have a Mexican death match where all of them could talk about their immigration strategies while surrounded by Hispanics? <laughs> yes. And we don't have to worry about rule breakers, unlike pro wrestling, because you know there won't be any foreign objects. Because everything we made in the USA with the RNC debates. <laughs> yes, but the main event, oh, well, I can see it now. The first debate ever held inside a 30-foot tall steel cage. So no one can run away from the issues. 16 candidates go in, only one candidate comes out. Oh, I wish this could happen, <laughs> please. And you know what, it's so crazy right now, it just might happen, who knows? But, speaking of crazy, uh, last summer, I took my family on a Disney cruise. Actually, who am I lying? My wife took myself <laughs> and our son on a Disney cruise. I had to tag along. But anyway, it went out of Vancouver. And let's just say I was not daddy of the year there because I accidentally walked my family through the largest open air drug market in Canada. Yay, daddy! <laughs> yes. But as we're walking along and we see this guy who is uh, inserting probably heroin or something, I'm like, what am I going to say to my nine-year-old son? When fortunately he came up with the best answer. Look, Daddy, they get their vaccinations outside here in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, yes, this is what they call socialized medicine. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, son. But the Disney Cruise was great. Their attention to detail was amazing. The first night I was on the cruise, I went to the Daffy Duck Dive Bar, and darn it, if someone didn't slip me a Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> and on most cruises, I'm like kind of worried about the ship sinking, but on the Disney Cruise, I was actually kind of hoping for it. <laughs> Just the thought of all these Disney characters Pushing away the kids while saying S I N K I N G were sinking. <laughs> Just kind of made me giggle. <laughs> Not to mention, I have to make the point to my wife hey, look, honey, the little mermaid. She can't swim after all. <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> yeah, there's actually only one thing that bothered me. As I love my karaoke, but karaoke on a Disney cruise ship is actually one song Do You Want to Build a Snowman? An eight-year-old saying, do you want to build a snowman? A ten-year-old saying, do you want to build a snowman? Over and over and over again. So eventually, the last night, I had to do my own rendition. <laughs> do you want to kill a snowman? <laughs> do you want to kill him now? <laughs> then just raise the temperature a bit. Hot water, torture it, that's how. 
I know he seemed cute in the previews. He's more obnoxious than Jar Jar Beat. And that's really annoying. Do you want to kill a snowman? And at that point, I was escorted out politely from the karaoke. They didn't want me to finish because kids were crying, but darn it, it didn't make me feel good inside. <laughs> yes. But if you do go on the Disney cruise, I do have three words of advice, though. One, Disney is all about happy endings. Just don't ask for them. <laughs> Two, I do recommend getting the fast pass for the lifeboats, just in case. And if you're looking for a buzz, you can get them at any gift shop on the ship or ask my son Ethan where you get vaccinations in Vancouver and he can let you know. My name is Paul Woody. Happy Thanksgiving! And now coming to the stage, just finished performing at the Laugh Factory, the comedy store, and now for tonight, he is performing for you at the Tempe Tempe of the Arch. It is Matt Martin. Give it up! I'm going to wipe this off, just because Buddha was like, I was doing my hair, and I think I got the microphone really greasy, so Paul's probably having trouble with it. I'm like... I, I don't think that's really going to be the first thing he's thinking about when he's up there. And it's not greasy. How did Buddha do? Did you do okay? You like him? Thanks. What's your name? Lucy. Lucy. It's not going to work for me. I'm going to call you Princess. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, Princess. Thank you. You're welcome. I, um, yeah, I had a good Thanksgiving. You guys might have seen me before earlier today on the street corner, <laughs> homeless <laughs> for the holidays. Um, a lot of homeless people are coming out. I don't, I don't, I was not going to start my show there. Just so you guys know, I just noticed it. We were doing a film shoot in downtown Phoenix in October, and it was about a homeless guy who had an imaginary rabbit. And as he became older, without a job, the imaginary rabbit came back. So he's in homeless wardrobe with about 40 film students filming. And homeless guys would walk up to him and be like, you got a cigarette? <laughs> He's like, yeah, can you spare any change? And he ended up making like 20 or 30 bucks in change while being on the film set with over $300,000 worth of film equipment. <laughs> and students have paid $800 to be in this class. <laughs> so it kind of made me a little jaded on homeless people lately. Where I'm like, that would be a good career choice. Um, at least that's what I learned last night at Thanksgiving, because I had a, a wonderful one. My dad was definitely high. Um, he drinks scotch. He's a scotch drinker. But he was really giving me a lot of advice and comedy. It was like, you know, it's just a hobby. <laughs> yeah, it's a hobby I've been doing since 2003, Dad. It's one of these days I'm going to start to really love it. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not like trying as hard as I used to because I'm a procrastinator, which is good because the first thing on my to-do list is kill myself. <laughs> so I had to throw away all my ties last week. Not because I don't still want a corporate job, it was just way too easy to hang myself. Um, a little dark. You guys were just like, no. No, we're not going there with you. I'm like, okay. I got some happier stuff. The happiest thing that happened to me recently was my dad last night at Thanksgiving telling us about Cox Cable. And he was like, well, I was on a tear last, like last month, and, you know, he's stirring his scotch and sucking his finger. And he's like, oh, I called up the Cox Cable, and I gave him a piece of my mind. And I got service. Within three weeks, they were out there fixing the cable. <laughs> like, that's great. I like the snake sound effect. That was cool. You're like, tss, tss. I got my, uh, I got crosses on this bracelet. I used to have the WWJD bracelet, and I just ordered a new one. It's the WWJD VDCNSSHHDDHD bracelet. 
So what would John claude Van Damme, Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal, having had drinks during happy hour do bracelet? <laughs> Chicken names, take names, and tip well. Uh, the worst thing I think happened to me in October was uh, I, had, uh, I had a girl tell me that I say mean things. And I don't think I do. And the more I tried to defend myself, the meaner it sounded. I'm like, oh, so I say mean things? Well, then tell me what I say. I want you to tell me with your mouth, with your big fish mouth, tell me what it is that I say. I mean, I love you, but I just want to hear it as, that one, yeah. I mean, it's a man in accidental angst up here, you know? I just couldn't, there was no uh, the way out of it. And I realized it's kind of who I am anyways. Like, I'm the type of person who's interested in what I'm talking about for about five minutes, and then I lose complete interest. I'm like, oh, you know what we should do this weekend? We should go to the lake. My neighbor's got a boat for sale. We could probably take that, have it back before he even notices it's gone. <laughs> I'll drive, although my tires are kind of bald, so we might get a flat. I don't have a license, so we'll probably get pulled over. And then I'll end up going to prison, at least for the weekend. And then while I'm in there, they'll learn that there's another Matt Martin in Washington wanted for murdering people by putting cherry bombs in their pee hole. You know what? Screw the lake. <laughs> The lake is stupid. Uh, my funnest class this semester has been um, stage combat for film. And uh, to get ready for it, I took an Italian long sword fighting class. And the instructor came out and told us to choose a ward, which is Italian for guard, but I thought he said word. So I was standing there going, strawberry, <laughs> strawberry. <laughs> It's like, is that how you're going to defend yourself? I was like, I guess not. Pomegranate! <laughs> Banana! Apple! Don't hit me! <laughs> Which was actually the complete opposite of the stage combat class, because you two hit each other, is what I learned. And stage combat? Try not to ever hit anybody. Um, this was a nap. This is when you're, you're nervous, and you're not kind of just moving on. And if I was doing a play, you'd eventually notice that this is super annoying. Right, Princess? Right. <laughs> See? Stop it. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other day, I met a manic depressive. Uh, at least I think he was manic depressive. I think he was a true manic depressive. The guy was just walking down the street happy about being depressed. He's like, woo! What's the point? There is no God! We're all gonna die! Overdose, sleeping pills! <laughs> Overdose, sleeping pills! I ran up, gave him a dollar. I was like, even if you're not homeless, that act is something I'm gonna need later. <laughs> so I was glad I bought that joke from him. He just wasn't aware that we were making a transaction. <laughs> um, I wrote down the... I guess that's gonna... I wanted to tell this joke last night. It was 47 hours ago, and I was doing the Laugh Factory stage. And, uh, but to a lot of people, sex is a drug. To me, I feel more like a sex camel. And not because I go a long time without having sex, but because I like to have sex with camels. <laughs> <laughs> that was what I was in and on. So that was my time. Thank you guys for coming out. I hope you guys all have a safe rest of your holiday. Um, I'm aware that it's here now because finals are coming up. So if you guys are in, well, there was a lot of older people. So your kids really need to make sure their grades are where they need to be within the next two weeks or they have to pass a test, which is really kind of hard to do. Um, especially if, like it involves a cup. Speaking of... <laughs> that was my segue to bring the next I wrote this down. This... This next comic is surrounding himself with good, hard-working people. And it makes him more uncomfortable than a special ed teacher giving you career advice. So surround him with your laughter tonight. Bob Rocky. You, know, you keep it going for Matt, everybody. Isn't he adorable? Hi, happy Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, you guys look great in the, in the, in the spotlight. Looks like uh, awesomeness. 
Just total awesomeness. It's awesome. It's crazy Thanksgiving, isn't it? Man, I wore my skinny jeans. <laughs> Got that going for me. We were backstage uh, talking about movies, and obviously Thanksgiving's a nice little holiday to watch a lot of movies. You can binge watch movies and stuff like that. I think somebody, one of the comics had already said that. And we were talking about the genres of mu movies. My genre of movies are like the sports movies. And I mean, like the Rocky movies, all 70 of them, um, they're, they really, they get you, they, they get you going. Rudy, remember Rudy? Isn't that awesome, that little guy? Cheered for that little fella. He never gave up, never gave up on his dream, ever. Don't you, sir. I mean, <laughs> and uh, Rudy was good. How about uh, Brian's song? Speak, remember that movie? Yeah, crying, <laughs> crying. Brian Piccolo and stuff, that was an awesome one. He got a lot of tears. A lot of tears. I don't know any guy or woman that has not watched that movie and cried. Like a blubbering idiot. That's me. I did that. And one of the most favorite sports movies of all time that I watch and I cry every time is Deep Throat. It's just... <laughs> get you right about here. Uh, born and raised here in Phoenix. Any, any natives by round of applause in Arizona? Any natives in Phoenix? Sure. Awesome. Speaking of Deep Throat, I grew up right on Van Buren. Where the... <laughs> The men were men and so were the women. It was really, it's really a great little thoroughfare. Um, Van Buren is really a nice little thoroughfare now. They've really tried to clean it up over the last 50 something years. And they're really doing a great job. Uh, I, uh, I went to school, a little cattywampus of Van Buren, um, a school that was named after German testicles. And it, yes, you're right, absolutely right. B-A-L-S-Z, balls. When, when you're, yeah, balls school. We were the Tigers. We were ferocious. We were good in contact sports. And we were in hands-on school. We just did it all. We did everything. It was really great. Um, my favorite year of all time in any type of schooling, and I've had many, many schools, but my, my favorite year was sixth grade. It was, just a, it was just a great year. It was the year of the boner for me. Um, it, <laughs> another good guy is laughing there, right? The year of the boner, and I can tell you why, because the year, it was like a gateway. It was just a, it was just an awesome year. I mean, sitting in the back of math class, in those little tiny desks, <coughs> daydreaming about Farrah Fawcett, maybe Billie Jean King, because they worked for me back then. It was just back in the, in, in the late 70s, or late 60s, and I'm sitting back there, and then jarred out of the, the, the fantasy and the, and the daydreaming to solve a math equation on the chalkboard, which is, it just, it's not good. But especially, there's three ways to walk, guys, if you have a boner in, in grade school. Three ways, and I'm gonna demonstrate them here for you. Not that I have one, but <laughs> I, I, you can walk, you, you get up, and then all of a sudden, there's three ways. And the one, the, the one, the most popular way is the lower back problem boner walk. Maybe uh, uh, with a uh, Groucho Marx kind of look. And you, you got that, the lower back. You don't want to give up too much of what you got going on. You do have a super, super back problem. Then the other one would be a left or a right shuffle. A shuffle, a boner shuffle. And the third, which is what I chose to do, was just to be straight up and proud. And you just walk straight up and proud to the chalkboard and, and, and do that it just it's just great you folks can laugh at any time maybe even get a little visual maybe even practice that at home guys i am so out of shape just that little bit of sprint work that sprint that was a sprint because i have dachshund legs i have the legs of a dachshund i'm really quick right out of the goddamn gate but i stopped real quick is there somebody here is there a doctor here? I just had my appendix taken out two weeks ago. Seriously, that's a true story. And nothing like getting a, 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 an organ removed from your body that does nothing. Absolutely does nothing for you. There's no medical term for it other than if it's done, it's done, they take it out. That's all. That's all it is. And the doctor said, we have an unused organ that does nothing for you that is, needs to come out. She put her hand up about that big and I said, please make sure you, you get the right organ. <laughs> it was awesome. It was great. I am, uh, I'm 53 years old. I'm definitely out of shape right now, but I am starting my life over. And um, 
I live with my sister, but not in the gay way. And so I live with my sister. I have a, a job now where I deliver chemicals uh, for a living. And these are the, the legal kind this time. Now. The legal kind. And what I'm getting at is it's not a real big secret that I've done some time. I've done a little time in the pokey in the old Cross Bar Motel in prison. A little, time, a little time in prison. I robbed a bank with a hooker. And that's okay. You can gasp. You can be quiet. You can do all of that. And, um, but most would use a gun. But hookers go off too. And those guys that know that will know that they, they go off too. So when I get stopped by the cops nowadays, it can go one of two ways, but it usually turns into an episode of Cops, which turns into an episode of Lockdown. And that turns into an episode of Survivor. And that turns into an episode of Naked and Afraid. That was my Joey Bishop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be my time. I really appreciate you coming. Give yourself a hand. And give, yeah, give me a clap for me. I'll take that. I survive on low self-esteem. It just happened. Thank you. We're going to bring a guy up that you've seen seven times already this evening. And um, you're going to see him a little bit longer right now. He's, uh, he's a guy that uh, we do a little radio podcast in the morning, ladies and gentlemen. Not like a podcast. The podcast is on Mixler, which is ComedySchoolsRadio.com. ComedySchoolsRadio.com. Yeah, ComedySchoolsRadio.com. Now, uh, now bring me out. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring him out for the 17th time tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Before that, tell them to fill out their slips and they can win free tickets. Then bring me out. Are you guys hearing what I'm thinking? It's, 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 it's crazy. My cellmate for many years, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Vincent. I didn't want to. Um, I'm not really. Um, I actually. The thing is, I. Uh, what I want to. I. I uh, there's no point in after many. What I'm trying to. I don't really, there's no, I never finish a sentence, so um, I don't say, no one listens, so there's no reason to finish. Because anything you say, you gotta repeat. Because if you tell somebody something, oh, I'm sorry, I wouldn't listen, what do you say? So I just don't, I just go, hey, what, hey, how? And um, thank you very much. <laughs> I, John Gregory's about here in a few minutes, but I just, I wasn't finished talking about anal leakage, so um, <laughs> I thought I'd finish that subject. It's not really, I, would, I don't really want to say, I don't, I feel compelled to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I gotta talk about something else. Here's a weird thing that happened to me. Uh, I was talking about quitting smoking before I uh, quit smoking. Why, do we have smokers? Let's hear it, my applause smokers. Jeez. <laughs> it's, it, it's, you know, the country is changing. We just, we just stopped smoking. That's why we're all so pissed off. Did you notice that the rise in anger in America, right-wing talk radio, campus protests, directly correlates to the reduction in nicotine usage in America? That if we were just all go back and be smoking, we wouldn't have all this shit going on in this country? <laughs> you're not smoking. You quit smoking, you're angry all the time. You know, well, you're smoking. Because when you smoke, you get to think for a minute. I'm going to kick that guy's ass. First, I'm going to have a cigarette. Then you smoke it, and then you go, all right, I just forget it, let's go home. But when you don't smoke, then you go and you get in a fight, or you have enough breath to start a radio show and yell all day. So we need to go back to smoking and smoking heavily, ladies and gentlemen, to save this country. <laughs> These are my and it's and people are so arrogant. I, I don't smoke anymore. Uh, obviously, none of you do. But do, do you still find that people are arrogant? I don't like people who are like I don't smoke. Like you know, like you're special. Like you know, you walk on water now because you don't inhale fucking smoke. Uh, I'm checking into a hotel one time. Check this hotel, and the guy goes, all right, welcome to our hotel. He's acting all high flu. It was a holiday in for Christ's sakes, buddy. So um, he goes, and uh, we had seen out that all of our rooms are not smoking. And if you smoke, there's a $250 fine. And I go, oh, you don't have non-smoking rooms. You have very expensive smoking rooms. <laughs> I stayed there three days, cost me four grand. <laughs> It's, uh, I was thinking about my father, it's the holidays, he's, he's no longer with us, but uh, my father liked to drink. I don't know if he liked to drink, but he certainly did. And, uh, <laughs> and I liked to drink, and you'd think that we would have gotten along better, you know, but we didn't. 
Until one day I was finally, you know, uh, everybody has that moment in life when you go, now I've reached a certain point in my life, you know, I've reached a milestone. And I remember it was sometime in the 70s and, and my phone rang. I was living in a river cabin in uh, uh, this little town deep in the woods in Missouri outside of St. Louis. And uh, I didn't have a TV or radio, but I had a phone. Uh, and the phone rang and it was my mother. My mother calling me on a phone. Okay, uh, and uh, she goes, Tony, and I go, because that's my name, and um, I go, yes, and she goes, um, your father's in jail, I go, oh, okay, and she goes, and I can't find your uncle, he's probably in jail too, and I go, yeah, she goes, and your father had the car, so we go bail him out, and that's the day I became a man, <laughs> because now I was actually, uh, that was supposed to be the funny part, by the way, so, um, <laughs> If you tell that to a bunch of drunks, they laugh. But an audience goes, that's fucking pathetic, son. <laughs> that's the most stupid thing I ever heard. You know, so I, I, never, I, never, I remember getting him out of jail. But uh, I'm getting you out of jail now. You know, he still hit me. So, um, so I know he still loved me. So, and now I wonder if some of my, uh, uh, my decision-making process all steps around. I live in, um, uh, I don't I live in Arizona, but I don't live in Maricopa County. I live in, like, Pinal County which is good because we don't have a weird sheriff. Um, so, <laughs> I got frisked down there for three days once. So, um, yeah, so, and, and I, go, I go, how did I end up here? It's like, I go to Walmart, like you'll hear comics make fun of Walmart, you're gonna make fun of Walmart. Yeah, I go to Walmart, all the people look stupid. And I don't make fun of that because how did you come up with that joke? Because you were in Walmart. <laughs> That's how you got it, you know? And you know, Walmart is very, very subtle in how it gets you. Because I remember one time going to Mega Shop at Walmart because, you know, they're destroying small businesses and they're ripping off the Chinese. And one day I went, well, but I don't have much money and I need shit. So, um, <laughs> so I went to a Walmart and uh, now I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go to a cool Walmart. I'm going to a Walmart on Casa Grande Highway in Pinal County and I don't make fun of people in there because they go, I did this to myself. This is the sum total of my decision-making process. Every good idea I've ever had in my life that moved me forward has brought me here to a Walmart on Casa Grande Highway in Pinal County. And I would make fun of these people, but you know what? One day I was in there and I heard people in another aisle making fun of the way a guy was dressed, and I went around to see who it was, and I went, shut up, there he is. So <laughs> it was me because I had succumbed to Walmart dress. It's not that people that go to Walmart are retarded or stupid or dumb. Or, it's just, it's Walmart. Who dresses up for that shit? You've all been to Walmart. You probably went with a husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend. You never, as you were leaving the door, go, we're going to Walmart. Is this okay? You've never done that. And usually you're going to Walmart like on the spur of the moment. Like one day we were out of cheese and toilet paper, which are two weird things to be out of at the same time. <laughs> but we were out of them. And my wife goes, we're out of cheese and toilet paper. It looks at me weird like, what did I marry? So, um, and I go, okay. And uh, I go, I'll go to Walmart. And I didn't bother to, you know, I didn't bother to even see if I was wearing anything. <laughs> And I realized I was wearing like, I was wearing like uh, one of her skirts and cowboy boots, you know, and I, was, I had a cigar and it wasn't lit, you know, and I didn't give a shit, you know, I had tassel, I had a shirt on that said, I'm with stupid, and it was on inside out, you know, and I went there to Walmart and nobody said shit, you know, because that's how you dress at Walmart, no one cares. It's not that these people are socially inept, they're just thinking, why dress up for this shit? Why put any energy into it, for Christ's sakes? You've already failed. <laughs> it's not, you, know, you, just, you go to a dress with whatever you got on, you know? You just, you know, you wrap some towels around your ass, you know? Go in there and go, uh, you know. I always, when I go to Walmart to, uh, to delude myself, which I often do, um, I pretend like I'm a, 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 a cop. I will, and then I'm chasing the suspect. So that I'm not in there because, you know, because I'm there for cheese and toilet paper. I can't live with that. So I delude myself. I go, I'm here, I pretend like I'm a cop. Remember like uh, cop movies, like uh, TV shows in the 70s, and to be chasing people, zigzagging through a place and stuff, you're doing serpentine, you're doing rolling around and shit, you know? So I'm doing that through Walmart, and no one's paying attention. 
They're just going, that's that guy who dresses weird. So um, he was here last week in his wife's dress and cowboy boots. He buys cheese and toilet paper. I know. <laughs> but that day I was not there for cheese and toilet paper. You know what I was there for? Dog food. Because no, I have a dog. Things haven't gotten that bad. But um, I'm there for dog food. And so I still have to, so I'm like zigzagging through like uh, the cosmetics and the fucking, you know, the men's clothes. It gets weird. They start following because I go through ladies' cosmetics and then little kids' clothes and I'm running real fast. I go, there's something weird about this guy. So um, I go back there and what I'd like to do is uh, uh, the, the dog food comes like 24 in a case. You know this. You know this. Okay. But they cut the case weird where they cut it so it's down low. You know, I don't cut the case right in half so that it's wobbly. Like if you remember you try to get dog food out, if you pull it out too far, it'll fall off and stuff. But what I like to do is I like to buy 24 at a time, so I try to whip it out real fast and get it in my cart without dropping one can. And if I can do that, I think I still have a chance in life. <laughs> There's what something I can still do, because I can't play baseball or football or I can walk without a limp. But if I can do that, there's still a hope for me, you know, that I still feel a little athletic. Oh, magic. And I'll say to my wife, hey, look, magic's good. Oh, Christ. So, um, <laughs> you ever have that where your spouse is just looking at you and you go, and you realize that they're looking at you, that they have that look, and then that look is, I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> this, this is all, I had no idea. You don't know a person, you know. I met someone not too long ago, and they said, we got married after six months. I go, that's insane. I go, why? He said, it took my first wife and I five years to realize we hate one another. <laughs> you have to be with someone for five years before you decide if you're going to kill them or leave. You know, or if you're going to stay and put up with them. But then my wife you know, gives me those looks at the story. It used to be everything I said was funny, and I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what about this joke? Shut up. So now I got my 24 cans of dog food, right? Now here's something maybe you don't know. I'm going to share it with you. Okay, if you got uh, a large quantity of the same thing at Walmart, you don't have to, you don't, you don't want to pay me ass, you got to put everything up there. And they don't give you like, at the grocery store, they got like a big long belt, and that's kind of fun because belt moves stuff. And like there's a cute girl in front of you, you can put your stuff up close so it bumps in hers. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my wine just hit your condoms. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes. No, those are my condoms too. So, uh, they got that little spot. There's not enough room to put your shit. You know? So, but, if you got large quantities of the same thing, you can just put one up and go, I got 20 of these, 25, and they'll just bring it all up with one. Pretty cool, if you know that. It's a little inside Walmart shit to share with you. That's something I can tell you. <laughs> kind of like telling you where to get the best Coke, you know, at a bar someplace. The guy over there at the bar stool, he's got the best shit. This is how you can function at Walmart, man. <laughs> Some, you know, I, I feel like I should just go to your houses and tell you these jokes, and you can either accept them or not, like a traveling salesman. Because <laughs> some of you are buying and some of you aren't. Right? Like selling vacuum cleaners. So, that guy would buy the vacuum cleaner, you hear that? He'd get the hoses, the attachments, the whole goddamn thing. So, put one up. So I go there with my cans of dog food. I set one up there, I got 24, bring me up. And the woman, and that's what we think it was, <laughs> looks at me and she goes, are they all the same flavor? And I go, I don't know, I don't eat the shit. <laughs> And I go, why are you asking me this? She goes, well, they're not all the same flavor. i got to bring them up one at a time. And I go, they're all the same brand. They're all the same price. They're all the same size. Okay? She goes, well, if some are beef and some are liver, I go, do you really think there's beef and liver in those goddamn cans? <laughs> that is red mud from the bottom of a polluted river in the fucking Gulan province of fucking China. They shove it to a can and inject with food dye and flavor. That's what that shit is. It's not. She goes, I'm sorry, but if they're different, if they're different flavors, we have to ring them. Now I'm mad. She's ruined my day. She's brought me back down to terra firma. I'm no longer fucking Beretta chasing a pedophile through the fucking little kid section. I'm no longer fucking Merlin the Magician whipping shit out without it dropping. Right? I'm no longer this fucking financial whiz and efficiency expert that can bring things up. I'm just the guy who fucked up and ended up at a Walmart in Casa Grande. 
and I'm mad. So I started shoving the cans at her one at a time with Manson eyes. <laughs> and she's staring back at me with Walmart eyes like, you can't kill me, I'm already dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just wanted to tell my Walmart story. Are you guys having fun tonight? Yeah. You're a fun girl. We so appreciate you coming out, we truly do. Uh, there's little slips of uh, paper on your, uh, uh, your chairs there. If you fill them out, you have a chance to win four free VIP tickets. Find out about all the cool stuff we do and uh, be part of our comedy family here. I got one more comic for you. Very funny guy. Are you ready for your final act of the evening? Yeah! Coming to stage right now is a uh, effervescent, would be how I would describe him, ladies and gentlemen. He's the guy who uh, puts a song in your heart and a smile on your face. How about a warm welcome, please? Jonathan Gregory!
Except for you and the hat, buddy. <laughs> You're drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> Wanna do a little Black Friday shopping with me after the show? <laughs>
Did I just think out loud? <laughs> Wait, guy in the hat, you're about 60% my body weight. <laughs> What's your name? Andrew. Andrew? <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> As you all can see, I'm very romantic. <laughs> the police are here for me. You're not going to let him take me, are you, Daddy? And son? Going to back me up on this one? That's right. You're fucked, Andrew. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> As you all can see, I'm very romantic. I take girls on long walks on the beach. And then I walk back alone. <laughs> And I've always been really good at getting girls' phone numbers, but they always act like I'm bugging them when I finally call. It's like, don't list your number in the white pages if you're not down to fuck. <laughs> Andrew knows what I'm talking about. As a reverse greeter at Walmart, <laughs> I walk up to someone shopping there and I'm like, get the fuck out of here! Go back to your trailer, you piece of shit! I shop at Target, you cheap motherfucker! You know what? They go. <laughs> I dropped a buddy off at the airport this morning and I convinced him that you're not allowed to take cash on an airplane anymore. <laughs> Guess who's $65 richer? <laughs> and I spent all day last week helping that buddy move. At the end of the day, when we ended up at the pawn shop, I found out we spent all day robbing houses. <laughs> I come from a world of boxing. I've had over 50 fights, and I'm a three-time Arizona State boxing champion. <laughs> I don't say that to brag. I'm impressed. I say that to answer the question, what the fuck happened to this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and as a former boxer, still to this day, every time I hear a ringing bell, I just start swinging. <laughs> Which is why I leveled the Salvation Army guy in front of Walgreens. <laughs> and then I was like, Merry Christmas! Go fuck yourself! <laughs> I used to box, but I'll tell you one thing you'll never catch me doing. You'll never catch me skydiving. The only time I would ever go skydiving as if it was followed by the statement, this plane's going down! <laughs> and 
not be like Geronimo. <laughs> I take that back. There's one time I'd go skydiving. If it was me, strapped to Andrew's back. <laughs> Without the plane. <laughs> Just a flight simulation on my bed. <laughs> I'm going down! <laughs> I have a friend. I do, I have a friend. <laughs> Who's an amazing actor. He can cry on cue. It just takes one punch to the throat. <laughs> and we've done everything together. We grew up together. And he tells me man's best friend is a dog. Really? Did a dog help him move? <laughs> no! <laughs> Did a dog get him rides when he got pinched for that DUI? No! <laughs> Did a dog tear up his couch, hump his leg? and impregnate his neighbor's dog? <laughs> no! <laughs> I did! I'm his best friend. Woo! <laughs> I went fishing out in Tempe Town Lake. I caught a five and a half foot homeless man. <laughs> he was good. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to wake up with a boner. <laughs> I hope it's mine. <laughs> Oh, you always think you. <laughs> you felt it coming? <laughs> I sure did. You know what's happening tonight, don't you? You. Me. Not the son, he's underage. <laughs> and daddy. <laughs> Black Friday. <laughs> they say, once you go black, you never go back. I'm back. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Whenever a black guy sees another black guy that he doesn't know, they're both like, what's up? Same thing happens when a white guy sees another white guy inside a food city. <laughs> Except they're more like, this isn't Trader Joe's. <laughs> I came home the other night and there was a car parked in my spot. So I slashed the tires. No, it's stuck in my spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> but I like to go to the grocery store. Fill up two big grocery carts full of groceries. And when they ask me, do you need help out to your car, sir? I'm like, yes. <laughs> as soon as we get to the end of the parking lot, I go, we got six more miles to go. <laughs> <laughs> My car's in almost last hours. <laughs> And Andrew's in the trunk. Oh. <laughs> Let's play that game! Would you rather? Would you rather get a tattoo of a penis? Right here? Or right here? <laughs> You see right down the middle, Andrew? <laughs> Is that your wife with you? No, my girlfriend. Your girlfriend? Mm -hmm. She looks at you. <laughs> I guarantee you're getting late tonight. <laughs> because I'm bigger and stronger than you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> if anybody's looking for a babysitter, <laughs> follow me on Twitter. <laughs> At creepy comedy. If you follow me, I'll follow you back. Not on Twitter, I'll just follow you around. get to see some of the up-and-coming uh, talented comedians uh, around the, uh, the the valley that are going to start making it big. Uh, you can come and do that. But ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Tony Visage and yourself and all the other comics. And thank you. And please drive safely. Drive safely. Happy holidays, everybody.